Honourable Dato Sri uh, Mustafa bin Mohammad, the Minister and Prime Minister of the Department, Tan Sri Majid Khan, Deputy Chairman, KSI Strategic Institute for Asia Pacific, Tan Sri Michael Yo, President, KSI Strategic Institute for Asia Pacific, Tan Sri Abdul Wahid Omar, Chairman of Economic Club Kuala Lumpur uh, Advisory Council, and the Chairman uh, of the Bursa Malaysia. Mr. Andrew Will, uh, Chairman, Pacific Basin Economic Council. Mr. Narayamurti, the founder of the Infosys. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, members of the media. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you may be, uh, as we have participants from around the world. Uh, this is a new phenomena. What we see will be those who are present here physically. And we do have also a number of people who come in virtually. Welcome to the inaugural World Digital Economy and Technology Summit, WDEC, in Kuala Lumpur. Welcome to the digital era accelerated by the global pandemic. Our lives will never be the same again. Uh, in fact, organizing this world event has never been more flexible and cost-effective because speakers and participants globally now have the choice to come in physically or virtually. In fact, we have a very uh, prominent speaker from Indonesia who still could not um, secure the flight but could easily come in virtually. Some fun facts to share with you. Uh, first, we have uh, about 650 participants and speakers from 28 countries attending both physically and virtually. And the audience comprises top policy makers, diplomats, corporate leaders, academias, entrepreneurs, innovators, digital practitioners, and digital evangelists. Second, we have 12 ministerial level speakers to share with us about the future the shapes of the digital future. We shall explore various topics from the current state of world digital economy, digital currency, digital leadership, digital technologies, talent, youth, smart cities, and digital inclusion. We now live in a somewhat divided world. We are either a practitioner or digital practitioner or a non-practitioner. That means user or practitioner. Hence, separating us into digitally advantaged or disadvantaged. Uh, having said that, we observe some paradox in reality in the recent months. Despite the fear that digital technology will result in massive unemployment, what's intriguing is that many countries are facing severe manpower shortage. What could be the reasons? Well, digital systems are connected via global internet network, but could not do networking like human because it does not have feelings or emotion and affinity to each other. Machines has no sense of connectedness, sadness, no happiness, and cannot make judgment call. Example, what to do when chicken prices go up? Even though you know, we, from the big data, we can predict the trend. Uh, so it takes human to make judgment call on the policies to address that. So hence, human will be needed in many instances and will continue to excel in areas that require human touch, empathy, care, and joy of relationship and the judgment call. Uh, as long as we develop our human capacity we need not be overly concerned about the competition with machine. Beyond that, we ought to master digital and wider competencies and be competent as a digital practitioners that command the army of the digital, digital tools to make our life better and productive. In this WDAC, be human, get to know each other, Find opportunities, 
learn from each other and share the great time together. I assure you that your gain in relationship is as enriching as the great learning from the distinguished speakers. In conjunction with the WDAC summit in the gala dinner tonight, we shall recognize 38 award winners who are the movers and shakers in the digital economy. Uh, I would like to take this opportunity to express my gratitude and appreciation to all the speakers for their generosity in sharing of their experiences and wisdom. I would like to also thank our strategic partners, corporate partners, and of course, uh, you know, strategic partners such as Silver Lake and Red One has been a strong pillar of support, uh, together with other corporate partners that has been contributing towards making this conference affordable to wider audience. Uh, special and sincere thanks to all the supporting organizations, uh, our co-organizer, the Economic Club of uh, Kuala Lumpur and the Pacific Basin Econ Economic Council. And our most sincere thanks to the Honorable Minister Datuk Sri Mustafa Muhammad, fondly known as Tokpa, who inspires us with his digital leadership by leading and organizing the initiatives of My Digital, the Malaysia Digital Economy and Transformation Blueprint for the next 10 years. Uh, with that, uh, Again, thank you very much, uh, Tokpa and everyone. I wish uh, all the pass participants a very fruitful uh, learning and networking in this do deck. Have a very nice uh, conference ahead. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Wei, for your welcome remarks and setting the stage for what is to come in the next two days. Indeed, this summit is a place for much learning. Thank you once again, Dr. Now, it is my honor to invite our opening keynote speaker, the Honorable Dato Sri Mustafa bin Mohammed, Minister in the Prime Minister's Department for Economic Affairs, Malaysia. Let's give him a louder round of applause. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Selamat pagi, salam sejahtera, salam keluarga Malaysia. Saudara Pancara Majlis, my colleagues, my friends, Tan Sri Majid Khan, Tan Sri Wahid, Tan Sri Michael Yo, Dato Wei, uh, distinguished uh, panelists, uh, distinguished uh, speakers, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, thank you, Tan Sri Michael Yo and Dato Wei, for inviting me to, to this event. Uh, once again, I've been asked by KSI Strategic Institute to say a few words, which I'm, of course, very happy to do this morning. I've been informed that we have an attendance, a diverse audience of about, of about 650 participants, entrepreneurs, corporate leaders, and civil society organizations uh, coming from about 28 countries, as shared by Dr. Wei a few moments ago. It is always, of course, a pleasure to speak to this group of very important people coming from many parts of the, of the globe. So once again, thank you for inviting me to this uh, important occasion. Ladies and gentlemen, this, this event, as we know, is called the World Digital Economy and Technology Summit. Uh, uh, some of you might be, of course, are overseas, online and offline. Uh, as you know, we have been open to all these kind of uh, uh, opportunities and programs linking Malaysia to the world. As an open economy, we have been dependent on global trade, FDIs and tourism. And we know that the wide, widespread use of digital technology has accelerated the pace of globalization transform the world economic order and indeed has also transformed the Malaysian economy. Ladies and gentlemen, let me first draw your attention to Southeast Asia where we are. This region is the fastest growing internet market in the world. According to the Economy Southeast Asia 2021 report by Google, Tamasi and Bain and Company, the digital economy in this region is poised to reach one trillion US dollars in gross merchandise value by 2030. South Asia has more than 440 million users. More than 80% of them have had some experience using digital platforms for their consumption needs, whether this means using an e-hailing service to get to KLCC or purchasing clothes on Shopee. The pandemic has completely changed the digital landscape in South Asia, 
where 40 million internet, new internet users were recorded last year alone, driving the momentum of digitalization to unprecedented highs. Let me illustrate this with an import, a very important statistic. Last year, Malaysia exceeded our target of 875,000 MSMEs adopting e-commerce by the year 2025, four years ahead of schedule. Over 890,000 MSMEs adopted e-commerce as of the end of last year. This is a very important achievement for us. While we have revised the target to 1.1 million MSMEs by the year 2025, uh, it just goes to show how far our country has come in terms of digital adoption, in particular MSMEs. Ladies and gentlemen, with the launch of the Malaysia Digital Economy Blueprint last year, it is the government's hope that it will guide Malaysia's transformation to become a digitally driven and high-tech nation by the year 2030. Because of the blueprint's importance, it comes under the Prime Minister's department. As Minister in the PM's department, one of my responsibilities is to ensure that the blueprint is implemented smoothly and that digitalization is progressing at the rapid pace that takes into consideration our safety, security, and privacy. Neither the old, nor those without the facilities, nor those who live in remote locations in this country should be denied the fruits of digitalization and economic growth. Prosper prosperity must always be shared with everyone in society, regardless of their backgrounds. This is the shared uh, prosperity vision that we all in Malaysia embrace. Ladies and gentlemen, let me spend a few minutes to share with you the progress and success stories we have achieved in implementing the My Digital Blueprint. The blueprint, as you know, is divided into six classes. So let me go through, uh, let, let me sh share with you a number of highlights. For the economic cluster, the Digital Investment Office, a one-stop digital investment to facilitate ease of doing business for investors, is approved. 16.5 billion ringgit in total digital investments, meaning that we are on, we are on track to achieve the 70 billion ringgit digital investment target by the year 2025. For the, digital, for the digital talent cluster, my digital corporation recently partnered with the Asia Academy to accelerate digital literacy among students and to equip professionals with digital skills. We are also partnering with Microsoft Malaysia, an upcoming digital skilling program for Malaysian civil, civil servants in the public sector to encourage the use of digital, digital te technology in their everyday work. There are many, many more examples. I've chosen to highlight only two. With regards to the digital infrastructure and data cluster, Malaysia's 4G coverage has reached more than 95% as of this year's first quarter under phase one of the Jandala Initiative. For the society cluster, e-payments among consumers and merchants have seen an increase over the past uh, few, few months, with QR pay becoming accepted as an everyday norm, even at a micro-enterprise level. On the emerging technology cluster, the development of a vaccine management system during the pandemic to assist, with, to, to assist and track and trace process and ensure the authenticity of the COVID-19 <coughs> vaccine from manufacturer to recipient was based on blockchain technology. Last but not least, for the government cluster, 70% or about 80% of all federal agencies, departments and strategy bodies are now able to receive e payments. In addition, 75% of ministries and agencies are using the data sharing platform, my GDEX. Ladies and gentlemen, we're pleased with all these achievements, but we all know that we're going through a very challenging period. Global markets have been badly hit. Inflation in some countries have hit record highs, uh, and there's a war going on in Europe, and uh, a lot of um, challenges we're facing now has got to do with uh, geopolitical instability in that part of the world. In Malaysia, we're feeling the, the pressure in the form of, of a big increase in subsidies has been announced by the Ministry of Finance a few days ago. These are some of the challenges, and we have to na navigate this together. As we got out of COVID-19, we are in the endemic uh, period, and now we are grappling with this uh, very difficult challenge. So it is incumbent upon all of us to see what we can do together in order to navigate this difficult period in containing inflationary pressures in making sure that all the long-term plans we put in place will be achieved. We have a few plans in, in Malaysia. The 12th Malaysia plan is the overall broad framework for five-year planning uh, for the whole of Malaysia. We have a digital economy blueprint, which attracts the implementation of a number of digital initiatives across six classes. 
and we have many other plans on agriculture, on, infra on infrastructure, on education, on TV and analysis. It is important, therefore, to make sure as a country that all these long-term plans are successfully implemented as we go through this difficult and challenging situation. We have to navigate ourselves to ensure that we remain on track uh, to achieve high income status by the year 2025. So this is a challenge that we, we all have to face together. And this is where technology and digitalization, hopefully I can steer our path forward with uh, greater clarity and overcome all the challenges. And by the year 2026, we hope to be able to declare ourselves as a high-income high country. So ladies and gentlemen, let me once again thank you for giving me the opportunity to say a few words this morning. I would like to congratulate once again the organ organizers for putting together uh, 650 participants coming from 28 countries. Hopefully this conference, in the context of current economic challenges, will be able to come up with some proposals as to how we can come together in order to deal with the, not only the short term, medium term, but also our long term challenges. On that note, it is now with great pleasure uh, that I uh, officially uh, open uh, this uh, KSI Strategic uh, Institute for Asia uh, uh, Conference uh, or Summit. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.